Hi, my name is Rachel, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the things you want to know before you go to Lancaster University. I'm a former Lancaster University student, I study politics, I graduated 2021 but I had my official in-person graduation in 2022 which is very very fun, you can check that video out somewhere here, I'll put it in the description below if you want to check that out. But anyway, these are the things that you should know before you go to Lancaster University. Lancaster University has a college system, there are nine colleges and you get to pick your college, well you get to put preferences down, you get to put two preferences down. Mainly for a lot of people, colleges basically just kind of determine where you live in first year. A lot of people don't get involved in their colleges, which can be quite a shame because there are lots of college events and free college events that you can go to, get free food, that sort of thing. But for the majority of people, college is pretty much, I'm going to be honest with you, where you live in first year. So really that's kind of what you want to base things on. I was personally in finesse, which was absolutely fantastic. It is the smallest college, but it's a really good location. You're near Spa, you're near Sultan's, which is where you get food if you like takeaway kind of food. At Go Burrito. You're close to lecture theatres, you know. It's not like Boland, because Boland's quite like near the underpass, which is where people get the bus, so it can be very loud after a night out, whereas Finesse is usually quieter after a night out. And it's right next to Files, so pretty much Fald and Finesse are very, very similar. Um, so yeah, personally I like them. The probably the best college, like objectively though I think it's like the biggest one people really like is county that's quite a good one but personally for me I really liked being in finesse I liked the location of it um and that also um when you're picking a college you also want to consider the room types there are in that college so some colleges have um superior ensuite which is basically more expensive and you have your own bedroom and an ensuite and then the kitchen's obviously shared whereas there's also finesse standard which was you had your own bedroom and a sink in that bedroom and then you had a bathroom which you shared with five other people and the kitchen you shared with five other people and it was obviously a bit like smaller and stuff um other colleges have different kinds of accommodation there are townhouses which are quite good um they you share like a bathroom between like two people not too bad and you have like quite a big living space which is quite good so you kind of also got to bear in mind what kind of accommodation you want to live in um in your first year and stuff so make sure you consider that personally ensuite was like the main thing for me um didn't really care about anything else wanted ensuite because obviously it's, it's scary you don't know these people i like to have my own toilet space. So in terms of what you get with your um, accommodation, I lived in Superior on Suite and basically it comes with a bed, it comes with a bin, um, pretty much the basics. In the kitchen it has a toaster, has a microwave, has a kettle, you know, pretty much the most basic things you can ask for and obviously hobs and stuff. Um, personally in my accommodation it was like electric so you didn't need any special pans but you do want to check when you get there I think to make sure it's not induction. I don't know if any accommodation has induction but that is something you need to be aware of. If you have an induction hob and you do not have an induction pan your food will not heat up. So just be aware of that. I'm not sure if any accommodation has it but just be aware because otherwise you're a bit screwed. But this is obviously my personal experience with um, superior on suite accommodation. Other accommodation is slightly different, but these are things you should be aware of. The beds are slightly longer than standard beds, and they always recommend you get like a flat sheet or a slightly longer single sheet. Um, I just got a normal single sheet from Ikea and Primark and they fit fine, but that's something to be aware of. And if you are quite short, your feet will hang off the end of, uh, sorry, if you're quite tall, your feet will hang off the end of the bed. I am very short, my feet do not. Um, but yeah, that's just something to be aware of with the beds. A lot of people get um, doubles. So obviously if you're going to live in town in your second and third year, which is what most people do, a lot of the accommodation has double beds. So that might be something you want to consider if you don't want to buy bedding twice. Basically get double, get a double sheet, get a double duvet, that sort of thing. The bed comes with absolutely nothing on it. So I would recommend getting a mattress protector because if you don't have a mattress protector, you will get fined if your mattress is like damaged afterwards. And then obviously a sheet a duvet, a cover for the duvet, pillows, pillowcases, basically whatever you want. But just be aware that some people do get doubles. So like you get a double like sheet for your bed and just kind of tuck it under. A little bit more of a faff, but then you're saving money next year because you don't have to rebuy all this bedroom stuff. So that's just something to consider. The room is pretty much bare, so you need to bring pretty much everything. In terms of superior en suite, you do not get toilet roll, but in standard you did get free toilet roll, but it wasn't like the best toilet roll, so you could bring your own if you wanted. Uh, but just to be aware of that, so you need toilet roll. My accommodation, there was no bin in my bathroom, and obviously I need a bin in my bathroom, you know, it's something you might want to consider. Get a little bin for your bathroom, it makes life a lot easier, especially if you need a bin in your bathroom. There are a few plug sockets in the bedroom, but I personally like to have an extension cord. Um, there is quite a lot of restrictions on what kind of things you're allowed, but you're allowed like a normal extension cord that's like 
a cord. You're not allowed those plugs that go in and have different like sockets. I don't know what you'd even describe them or call them, but basically a plug that has multiple different outlets on it, you're not allowed them. You're also not allowed candles in the accommodation, so do not bring candles. That's pretty much most universities, you're not allowed to bring candles, so be aware of that. Same with incense burners. You're not allowed things in your room. For most people there are some like exceptions like fridges, that sort of thing. Um, just kind of electronics that are like bigger like that, like kettles, coffee makers, anything like that, it has to stay in the kitchen. They do occasionally do room inspections. I personally didn't have a room inspection while I was there, but some accommodation does, so just be aware of that. But they usually will tell you before you come around, but just make sure you're being fire safety, because being fire safety, make sure you're being safe around fires. Don't, don't set a fire in accommodation, because everyone will get mad at you. Bus passes. So in first year of uni, I personally didn't need a bus pass. Basically, as you know, Lancaster is a campus university. So you, you do go into town like some days, but really I didn't really, I wouldn't need a bus pass in first year. Whereas in second year, a bus pass is pretty much essential because you're going into campus most days. Really, it just depends if you are living off campus in your first year or whatever, you probably want a bus pass but if you're living on campus you might not because bus tickets aren't that expensive and under 19's day rider as of 2022 it will probably go up is £2.60 and then it's like £5 for like over 19 like day rider on the stagecoach buses so just be aware of that you probably don't want it in your first year but in your second year that is a finance you kind of need to consider it's not really that expensive I don't think especially because you will be using it every day but yeah just be aware of that. They are just a few of the things you want to know before you go to Lancaster University. I'm always happy to make more uni videos about Lancaster especially um, because I know quite a lot because in their personal experience. I also did a video about the worst things about Lancaster University if you want to check that out. I also have so many videos about my personal experience there so you can check them out too. Hope you have a great day and enjoy Lancaster.